Yes, I'm Paul Mitchell. I'm General Manager for Technology Policy at Microsoft. Paul, what is TV White Spaces? TV White Spaces is basically the channels in a given area that are allocated for use for television broadcasting, but that aren't actually being used for TV broadcasting. So they're the empty channels on the dial. When you turn the dial and you don't get a TV picture, that's a white space. So why did they exist in the first place? Well, originally, the allocation of broadcasting spectrum was done in a way to completely minimize the potential of any interference between, between broadcasts on different channels. So the idea was you, you leave lots of gaps. Partly, that was because the radio technology, the day when the allocation system actually came into being, which is almost 100 years ago, just wasn't all that good. So you couldn't actually tune channels as efficient. And that legacy still stands with us today. So why is TV white space so important for emerging markets, particularly those like Africa? Well, TV white space is it's really important because it's, it's a access, represents access to a completely underutilized resource that can dramatically change the lives of people living in uh, developing countries. You know, to, to create connectivity to, to the web, and to enable people to uh, access the information, educational resources, and, and participate in sort of the digital economy is a major uh, uh, goal uh, for developing countries. And TV White Spaces represents a dramatically less expensive approach to bringing this connectivity to bear than other approaches. And Microsoft has been running a series of trials in a variety of countries. Can you describe to me the range of those trials and what they've achieved? But we've been experimenting with Spectrum in a number of uh, areas for over a decade, starting with trials on our corporate campus in Redmond, Washington, just to see what's possible. Those graduated to um, uh, a fairly long-running pilot that we ran in Cambridge in the UK uh, that included partnership with 16 other companies to do test and measurement of the potential for interference of white space broadcasts with um, with existing licensed television systems and that trial basically demonstrated that the technology works amazingly well. From there um, we expanded to a set of commercial pilots in Singapore which was designed to pilot different types of business models uh, and beyond that now we've been uh, involved with Indigo Telecom and the Kenyan government and USAID in the creation of a network in Nanyuki and Lima in Kenya bringing broadband connectivity to schools, community centers, healthcare facilities, and government, government offices uh, in places that uh, up till now had no access to this at all. And once the trials are over, where does the process go? Well, I like to think of them not as trials, but as actually deployments, because that is, in fact, the goal. We know that technically this works. Um, this is really all about bringing the technology to market in a way that will enhance the lives and connectivity and options of, of people in, in uh, all different parts of the world. And why is Microsoft doing this? What, what's the motivation for the company? It's pretty straightforward. If you look at the broadband connectivity generally, it's really both unaffordable and unavailable to a large percentage of the population of the world. And Microsoft. Um, it's in our business interest to find a way to actually get the, that part of the world connected. Uh, it satisfies both uh, a, a great social objective, which is to help elevate um, and build capacity in developing countries, and it also represents the opportunity for, for uh, new business and new markets for us once people have the ability to be connected.